The show you're about to see is performed by highly trained professional athletes. The moves and actions that take place are incredibly dangerous when not performed by skilled professionals. Please do not attempt to try and do any of what you see in this program at home. for the new generation. But that was 13 years ago. Now is a different time, and it's not your time anymore. Well, I mean, I would say a win over El Liguero would state the opposite opinion. We just, we just sat backstage and we, we watched your match, Doug. Congratulations, you went very hard to get that victory. But to be honest, Doug, I think you've lost it. I don't think you've got it anymore, Doug. How utterly disrespectful is Richie West? In case, in case you weren't aware, the name of the marquee is New Generation Wrestling. You weren't even the last generation. You were like three, four generations ago. This is... Oh, this, sorry, sorry, sorry. That saying you still got it to Williams and he just proved it and I don't know what point West is trying to make but this is just somebody needs to cut his microphone off because okay 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 maybe that was maybe that was a little bit unfair I mean you're a legend in British wrestling maybe I'm being a bit unfair because didn't you didn't you meet him at Wembley against Big Daddy or somebody oh this is this is just oh uh, Cass Crash is reaching for the mic as well don't want your Black and white when they were on TV. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is just good luck for the Destiny one more. Well, I don't think, I don't think after all the things that Williams had said to him, oh, and well, it was inevitable that if Williams had turned down West's offer, this was going to happen. And something tells me that this pack of fucks here on British Wrestling Weekly had this in mind anyway. But a genuine British wrestling legend is at the receiving end of a 4 and 1, and that point proven by the proven in the centre of the ring. And Haskins is saying, hold him down. And what's. He's saying, it looks like Rampage Brown and Richie West have told Haskins to do something. Oh no. Haskins has got that steel chair. And oh, look out, look out. Look how Williams is laid out. That, that man is a British wrestling legend. And there, oh no, Rampage Brown has that chair. No, no way, no. Jesus! Jesus! We need. Some, Mike, somebody needs to do something about this. I have known Doug Williams for, for 23 years, and this is the most disturbed I've ever been watching something in a professional wrestling ring. We need to. Can, sorry, can we? Can you? We need to get William some help. That was absolutely brutal. My God! I. Ah, oh, thank. We. There is. I have seen the 
control do some disgusting things in Richie West's pursuit of total domination in New Generation Wrestling. But seeing Doug Williams, who has given so much of his body and his soul for the growth of professional wrestling in Great Britain, to see what's just happened to him. So now it's down to these three men. Haskins up and over on the apron there. Oh, Gibson, can he eliminate Haskins? And, whoa, 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 oh, straight into that Samoan drop by Rampage Brown. And Gibson is in a world of trouble as Haskins goes to the top rope, a place he is most dangerous, dives. Gibson rolls out of the way. Haskins rolls through. Rampage Brown charges. Gibson gets the boot up. And Gibson's at, whoa, 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 oh, Haskins is out. My God, it's come down to Rampage Brown and Zach Gibson, the men that we declared as number one and number two as the biggest favourites to win this thing. Haskins can't believe it. But Gibson can, because he has made it his sole focus to get another contest against the NGW champion. The only man that can stop him now is the former champion, Rampage Brown, as these two monsters come face to face in the centre of the ring. And look at this, look at this, back and forth, huge forearms. And this one's broken down as one of these two men will be declared the winner of the Destiny Rumble. And Rampage Brown goes for that pole driver. Gibson fights back and Merseyside drop on the former champion. And Gibson, listen to this crowd. He feels the elimination of the Control's unstoppable monster is just one clothesline away. But it wasn't enough. He goes for a second. Almost. Will a third do it? Hits the ropes and... Oh, look at Richie West. Richie West. Trips at Gibson. And Richie West may have just made a big mistake because Gibson is enraged. But he must not lose focus because the stakes are too high in the NGW Destiny Rumble. This crowd screaming for Gibson to do it. Oh, and he hits West. And this place erupts. Oh, but watch out for Rampage Brown, bro. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no. Oh, Gibson's been eliminated. Rampage Brown has won the NGW Destiny Rumble. Oh. I can't believe it. This, this is a... St oh, it's Doug Williams! Entrant number 20 is here! My God! Doug Williams is here in the Liverpool Olympia! He's holding his ribs, but he's made it! Oh, and Gibson's got a chair! Gibson's got a chair! Rampage Brown hasn't seen him and... Oh! Zach Gibson has levelled the playing field because the same steel chair that many thought had cost Williams his shot at destiny has played a part in karma and now the odds have been evened. My God, what a story. Doug Williams is picking up Rampage Brown who was knocked into next week and look at the pain on the face of Williams as he tries to eliminate the former champion who blocks him and fights back. And have you ever seen Rampage Brown look so groggy? He's fighting with all he has left, but give Rampage Brown credit because he has enough sense left in him to viciously kick at William's ribs, the ribs that we thought were broken and that we later found out were bruised. And now, oh, Samoan drop. He angled it perfectly onto the side of Williams. And look here on our replay what happened just moments ago. Zach Gibson was distracted, most likely on purpose, by Richie West, who sacrificed himself for what we thought was a win, as Gibson was eliminated. But moments later, the man who earned his shot at number 20 by beating El Liguero made his way to the ring, holding his ribs. And Williams is now, yeah, precariously perched on that top rope, but he used his body weight to roll himself back in the ring. This crowd firmly on the side of a British wrestling legend, but Rampage Brown goes for that Samoan drop again. Williams fights out the back. Oh, oh, German suplex, German suplex. And, well, no, no, no way. Oh, Williams wins, Williams wins. My God, Williams has won.
title showdown. Coming up next, the most televised British champion of the previous generation gets his shot at the most televised champion of the new generation. As Doug Williams challenges Nathan Cruz for the NGW Championship. It's a British dream match and it happens next. Don't go anywhere. The show you're about to see is performed by highly trained professional athletes. The moves and actions that take place are incredibly dangerous when not performed by skilled professionals. Please do not attempt to try and do any of what you see in this program at home. My first memory of Doug Williams was seeing, obviously, when we used to have the wrestling channel and they used to have these music videos that used to come on like in between like the adverts and stuff like that. I can just remember the music playing, it was like da na 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 da na na and it's like his name pops up and obviously I never knew who the guy was then. And then like it was just obviously these highlights from his matches and I thought, yeah, this guy is this guy is amazing, you know, this guy's something special. But and then from there obviously I was watching a lot of FWA as well and I was just like following him and what he was doing back then. It was just it was great stuff. One of my favourite and probably first Doug Williams matches I remember seeing was uh, him and Steve Carino. It was the best out of three falls match. And I think, obviously at the time, I'd heard of Steve Carino. Actually, I'd read about him in magazines and stuff like that. But just seeing like Doug go to work from a British guy, nonetheless go to work with Steve Carino, and he didn't look out of place at all whatsoever as well. I think it was just something that's, that's really memorable for me. You know, when you think of great British wrestling matches that have happened over the past 25 years, one of the ones you think of is Doug Williams versus Jerry Lynn. I just remember like watching it as a fan, and you know when Doug Williams hit that chaos fairy, I was just like, my mind was blown. I absolutely loved it. I was quite shocked to see uh, to see Doug in NGW um, in a, in a good way as well. You know, because I had I had no idea what was going to be happening with him. I had no idea what he was going to be doing, and you know I, I found out like about him being in the Destiny Rumble like on on the day. Um, so no, it was, it was something really positive, and I think it's great for me as well because it's kind of like full circle moments, you know. When I used to watch this guy on TV, and now here I am, part of a TV show that that he's on as well, you know. So I think it's incredible having him around. When you look historically back at British wrestling, particularly in the last couple of decades, I don't think that there's been a British wrestler come through the scenes that's had the career quite like Doug Williams. And that's no disrespect to anybody else, but you look at the achievements that Doug's made, I mean, not just in this country, but in Japan, in America, in a major company in America. And you look back at his career in the FWA, for example, I mean, he was the British heavyweight champion, and then he went on to do all these great things. And it, it's kind of a full circle thing. Now he's coming back to, to see the new generation, and now he's getting the opportunity to step into the ring with the current champion, that'd be myself. I mean, it's so exciting for me to test myself against somebody with, you know, the experience that Doug's got. I mean, people have requested to wrestle Doug Williams. You know, he's, at one time, he was one of the hottest free agents in independent professional wrestling in the world, not just in the United Kingdom. He was a hot prospect and everybody was looking at Doug Williams. So now to have him done those things and achieved what he has and be able to come to new generation wrestling and test himself against the new generation i mean it's for british wrestling fans i think it's something to see definitely um for somebody who's part of the new generation and at the, at the moment at the forefront of it um you know it's something that i really am excited to, to get my teeth stuck into um i mean this this match with doug it's like the battle of two generations really Doug Williams was the most televised British champion of the last generation. And now you have myself, who's heavily televised and is the current champion of the new generation. So you've, you, as I mentioned, you've got the, you know, the two generations colliding and this match is now going to be broadcasted in 34 countries globally as part of NGW's new era. Mike LeBert, it's just got everything, like the stars are almost aligning for this perfect match to take place between Doug and myself and I, I'm honoured to be a part of it and 
And I think British wrestling fans, and, well, not just British wrestling fans, fans around the world, anybody who follows British wrestling, is, uh, you know, got a sense that something's about to change in the air right now, that this is definitely the dawn of a new era. But that kind of also puts that pressure on my shoulders that I've got to walk away with a victory because it can't be new generation wrestling. If the guy led the last generation comes in, it takes my NGW Undisputed Championship. I mean, I've got a ton of respect for Doug Williams, and you can probably sense my like, excitement going into this match, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm still going to go into that changing room, put on my boots, and I'm the show still only from Cruz. I'm the NGW Undisputed Champion. I'm walking into the match as the NGW Undisputed Champion, and I'm walking out as the NGW Undisputed Champion. I've held that belt for over a year now, and I'm very, very proud of that. Now, Doug Williams, as great as he is, with all this pressure that's mounting up and all the eyes that are going to be on NGW from all over the world, or if there's one thing that's followed throughout my career is that I do well under pressure. So you want to put the pressure on me again? Look what happened to the control of Grass Richard West, what happens when Nathan Cruz is under pressure? Grass Rampage Brown, what happens when Nathan Cruz is under pressure? Zach Gibson, Matt Myers. There's a long list of people who can tell you when I'm under pressure and my back's against the wall, well, that's when I can perform. That is when I go out and steal the show. A hugely important match in British Wrestling is about to happen here on British Wrestling Weekly. And so with that, what better guest timekeeper than one of the most influential women in the history of British Wrestling, Katarina Lee. Dave Bradshaw here alongside former British Heavyweight Champion Alex Shane. Alex, it's great to have Katarina Lee here at ringside. Well, she's got a front row seat, Dave, for arguably the biggest title match we've ever had on this programme. Here he comes, the man who has done it all in the wrestling world. He has won championships around the globe, but there is one championship Doug Williams has not won, and that is the NGW title. Well, during the period where Katie Lee was blazing a trail on the UK scene, Doug was the champion in the FWA, which at the time was the most televised wrestling company of that era. Nathan Cruz, Doug's opponent here tonight, is the most televised champion of this generation, the new generation. So it is a battle of generations. And to be honest, Dave, as a British wrestling fan of over 20 years, this is one match I've been waiting a long, long time to see. Well, in a different way, it's been a long wait for Williams as well. It was two seasons ago that he earned this title shot. So since then, Williams has been plotting for this night, working out how he can defeat Nathan Cruz. Well, you can work out whatever strategy, whatever plot as you put it, Dave Bradshaw, that you want. But if there's one thing we've learned about Nathan Cruz, and that is that for a young man, he can take the weight of the world on his shoulders and nobody in British wrestling reacts better to pressure. And he's going to have to use that attribute because the pressure he must be feeling as he's about to walk into a packed whole city hall must be monumental. The champion about to emerge. There is no one who has been more closely associated with new generation wrestling since its inception than Nathan Cruz. He is our champion, the man who carries the company. And tonight, he faces possibly the biggest challenge he's ever faced. You're absolutely right, because Doug Williams has been a champion in no in Japan. Ring of Honor in America, TNA in America, the FWA British Heavyweight Champion, uh, on top of multiple championships all across the United Kingdom and Europe. So Williams is without question the most experienced and the most well decorated, shall we say, heavyweight wrestling champion the Cruz has ever faced. Nathan Cruz, though, if we know one thing about him, is that he is not daunted by the big occasion. He has risen to them time and time again. The question in Hull City Hall in these coming moments will be can Cruz dig down deep 
and find that again. He's going to need all of it, all of that talent, all of that drive, if he is going to retain those championship belts here right now. Well, the whole City Hall is where Nathan Cruz used to come and watch wrestling as a child. And it's also the building where he won the NGW Undisputed Championship against Rampage Brown. But Dave, could it be the building that the show stealer finally meets his match in Doug Williams? For Williams, this is a chance to prove he's still the best in Britain. For Cruz, a chance to prove the torch has been passed to a new generation. Let's go to our ring announcer, Stevie Aaron. Another championship to his stunning resume. His opponent stands in the opposing corner. He is the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, heading from East Riding of Yorkshire and also leading at 225 pounds, this is the current reigning and defending NGW Undisputed Champion, the show stealer, Nathan Longest reigning champion in NGW history, but does that reign end with Doug Williams? The championship on the line, it's next on British Wrestling Weekly. The show you're about to see is performed by highly trained professional athletes. The moves and actions that take place are incredibly dangerous when not performed by skilled professionals. Please do not attempt to try and do any of what you see in this program at home. It has been a long time in the making but we are about to see the hotly anticipated NGW Championship match between Nathan Cruz and Doug Williams. What an atmosphere here in Hull City Hall, Alex. What do you think the key is going to be for Cruz if he is going to survive this challenge from one of the most experienced wrestlers in the world? Well, look at this show of respect by these two. And it's that level of respect which comes from the fact that Nathan Cruz used to watch Doug Williams when he was growing up as a fan. You know, Nathan Cruz mentioned previously on an episode of British Wrestling Weekly that epic match between Eddie Guerrero and Doug Williams, which Doug Williams won. I mean, that's incredible. So if Cruz wants to win, he has to do two things. Number one, avoid the groundwork of Doug Williams. This guy is one of the best technicians in wrestling history, in my opinion. And number two, we know that Doug Williams has suffered serious, serious damage previously in a match over at WCPW to his hamstring and his knee. A very bad leg injury that made Doug essentially land on his head during a match, but it was actually the leg of Williams more than the head and neck that was injured. Cruz is aware of that. He's been working on submissions. That's a strategy he may want to adopt as this match goes on. Yeah, that's one of the things that people forget about Nathan Cruz. He, he's every bit the showman, the show stealer, if you will, but he's also a student of the game, always does his homework, always prepares thoroughly for every championship match, and that goes double, I'm sure, because he will be well aware of the threat posed by Williams. And you see what Nathan Cruz is doing here. Doug Williams has gone to the groundwork, and Cruz has done his best to try and keep Williams down and stop him getting a reversal. But as we're about to find out from Williams, this guy has a counter and a reversal from every single predicament. Look at that. If there's anyone in the new generation who can hang with Doug Williams in terms of mat work, Nathan Cruz may well be that guy, but as you say, Williams in control here in the opening moments. Well, there's a one major criticism that the previous generation have of the new generation, and that is that they've lost the heritage and history of British wrestling. Some of that incredible wrestling, old school, well of sports style, and it looks like that criticism may not be fair because Nathan Cruz is going hole for hole with Williams. A very clever escape there from Cruz, who is 
taking the fight to Williams. And, and, you, and you know where that pressure's going, Dave? Look, it's on the hamstrings of Williams. Yeah, very deliberate, very methodical from the champion. Williams finds a way out, goes for the kick, Cruz with those great reflexes, and we are back to square one between the champion and the challenger. And that was interesting. It was almost by Doug swinging a kick, which is not something you see regularly from him, and then pointing at Cruz. It was almost like Williams said to him, I knew what you were going for with that hamstring, but I wasn't staying in it. Obviously, Williams has had many a big match in his career. I talked as well about how Nathan Cruz has risen to the big occasion on many, many times here in NGW. Williams going for a wrist lock. What's interesting here is that Cruz or Williams, whoever were to win this, won't have any time to rest because there are so many people gunning for that championship. NGW is just so, so competitive. Well, we're just around the corner from that massive four-way ladder match. Gen X champion Matt Myers, the wild boar Mike Hitchman, Bubblegum and Robbie X, the winner of that match, will get a shot at either Williams or Nathan Cruz, depending who leaves the whole city hall with the NGW title. Right now, it is impossible to call a coin toss between Cruz and Williams as both men showing they are equal to the other. Wow, look at that there. Cruz just, for a moment at least, Dave, out wrestling Williams. You know, as a commentator, in the early moments of matches like this, you try and search for clues as to who might have the upper hand as the match proceeds, but it's very hard to pull these two apart. And Williams trying everything he can do to get out of that wrist lock. Even there, trying to send Cruz off the ropes, Cruz held on. I tell you what, Nathan has been studying his technical wrestling, and that's exactly what you've got to do if you want to compete with the anarchist. Williams trying to relieve the pressure. In fact, he gets a break by going to the turnbuckle. Clean break from the champion. Oh, Cruz goes after him, and Williams, the leapfrog, goes for a hip toss as Cruz. Cruz will flip over, lands on his feet. Williams goes for a clothesline, and the high knee from Nathan Cruz. Goes for the early cover, lateral press, and only gets one. And this is another strategy I think that Williams is going to have to avoid from Cruz, and that is the speed and the power offense. You know, Cruz, when he gets moving, this guy can really, really use his opponent's body weight against him. We saw it in that contest against Rampage Brown, where Cruz would win the NGW Championship. So Doug Williams has to really, really use his own momentum to bring Nathan Cruz down to his pace. What's interesting as well is that Nathan can... He can vary the pace so much. He was quite happy to go at a slow, methodical pace a moment ago, but look how he shifts gears. And look at what Williams is doing. Every time he tries to shift gears, Williams is adjusting the pace. Goes for a roll up this cruise. We'll get two and only two. God, it's like watching a game of chess between two masters. Williams with a headbutt into the midsection of Cruz to try and knock some of the wind out of his sails. Cruz will send Williams to the corner. Snapmare takedown. And Cruz gets shoulder blocked. Williams so put together. Yeah, big, thick, muscular is Doug Williams. And look at that. Cruz just sent him past and a drop. Oh, right under the chin. Right under the chin of Doug Williams there. You never know. Maybe this is a strategy by Williams to slow the momentum down further. But it looked like Nathan Cruz got Williams straight underneath the chin with that heel. Yeah, I think it, was, it looked like veteran instincts the way that Williams rolled out of the ring. He can't be out there for too long, though. Referee has a count on. And in fact, Cruz is following him. Cruz has realized that. He doesn't want to give Williams any chance to recuperate. So he's going to force him back into the ring where he can continue this onslaught against the challenger. And Williams, you know, has had victories. Oh, oh cover there. And Williams out. Well, Williams has had victories against some of the greatest names in professional wrestling. People like Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson, as he was known. Um, CM Punk is another one. You know, all of these massive names Williams has been in the ring with and beaten, and you've got to believe that's weighing heavy on Nathan Cruz. Also, now a big opportunity for Cruz, because imagine the confidence boost if you can beat a man who has been in there with so many legends. Cruz, drop kick to the back of Williams. He'll go for another cover. It's the third time early in the match he's gone for it and gets two again. And Cruz, it almost appears that Doug Williams, in some ways, even though he's on the defense right now, he has won a psychological game against Nathan Cruz because in the early goings, Cruz attempted to up the pace, up the momentum, and now Williams seems to have succeeded in slowing Cruz down. In fact, Cruz now looks like he's trying to get some rest as he 
puts Williams in this submission hold, applying a lot of pain to Williams while able to get his breath back himself. Williams fighting out of it, and Williams will send Cruz into the corner, follows him in, a running uppercut. Williams trying for something here, but Cruz with the back elbows to escape. He's going for one of those Japanese suplexes. He learned over in Noah and hits that one overhead, belly to belly, with authority. Williams knows so many suplexes, so many throws, got influences from so many different parts of the wrestling world. Incredible repertoire. And he hit those huge uppercuts. And now it looks like he's going for his patented second rope uppercut on Cruz. Wow, Cruz landed hard. Yeah, he got it. And that's the kind of thing that Cruz will have had scouted. He'll be frustrated. He wasn't able to avoid it. Williams only gets a two count despite hooking the leg. And now this is the time in the match where Williams has finally been able to get a handle on things. If, if Cruz is not careful, this one could run away from him quickly. And during the same period that Doug Williams was blazing a trail for male professional wrestling in the United Kingdom, our guest timekeeper, Katarina Lee, was doing the same thing for female wrestlers in the United Kingdom. Both had great success overseas, Doug in TNA and Ring of Honor, and Katarina Lee in TNA and WWE. But they're all here with Nathan Cruz in the whole City Hall for this NGW undisputed heavyweight title match. Cruz is stuck in this abdominal stretch, but he's trying to find a way out, and it looks like he might have had his counted. He's counted into an abdominal stretch of his own, but the hip toss from Williams sends the champion reeling. The advantage there was all Doug Williams, because the size and the thickness of Williams we spoke about earlier, huge knee drop there, is a real disadvantage when you're trying to put a submission on a man that muscular. Williams goes for a cover again, forces Cruz to expend more energy with the kick out. Cruz is struggling to get air into his lungs as Williams showing his mastery of ring management. He's taking apart Cruz piece by piece here in Hull City Hall. The viciousness of a Doug Williams uppercut, look at that. That comes straight from Tokyo, Japan when he spent that time in Noah. It may be a European uppercut, but it was a, a, a perfected strong style in Japan. Cruz though, the heart of a lion as he Ooh. fights back again and again. What was that from Williams? Looked like a close fist there. Referee didn't see it, and that was, well, I don't want to say cheeky, but, and yeah, it was almost like Williams adjusted, has gone back to a forearm now. That was controversial. Williams trying to see what he can get away with. This referee, he's testing out this referee almost as much as he's testing out Nathan Cruz. And so far, for the most part, Williams has got to be happy with how this match is going. Well, if Nathan has any hope of winning this thing, he needs to find time to regroup. Oh, that might get him some. Oh, well, yeah, it looks like Williams may have hurt his leg. That's the, the leg that was already injured on Williams. We've got to take our last commercial break. This championship match will continue. Nathan Cruz for the NGW Undisputed Championship. And the champion feels like victory may be within his grasp. And during the commercial break, Williams is at trouble with that leg, Dave. Let's not forget, it's the leg that he injured. And it was a very bad injury to the hamstring and kneecap. And Williams, oh, second close fist by the looks of it. Maybe a sign of desperation from the veteran that he's having to bend the rules. And Cruz with that insecurity to the back of the head. Williams may have been knocked silly. And this is what Williams has tried so desperately to avoid. The power and momentum of the champion. Slingshot, belly to back, center of the ring, ref in position. Dave, this could be all, it too. Could be all, it could be oh. all, and it nearly, nearly was. Wow. Cruz just a quarter of a second away from retaining the championship. And the strength of Nathan Cruz to pick up Doug Williams there with such ease. And now, for the first time, dare I say, in this contest, Cruz is looking in control. Oh, and what's he going for here? He said he's been perfecting new submission holds, and look, it's on that leg of Williams. Williams sees it coming and makes it to the bottom rope. I'm not even sure what Cruz was trying for there. He's going for it again. 
I mean, Cruz has been studying Williams, and look at that vintage Doug Williams. Reversal into a headlock. Oh, he's going for that Chaos Fury. Yeah, Williams drew him in, then turned it around, looking for the Chaos Fury. You can tell Williams is trying to end it quick. That's probably because he's worried about the injury. Oh, a Tiger Bomb attempt there by Cruz, who gets it. Oh, look, all that pressure on the hamstring with a pin as well. God, Cruz is so smart in that squared circle. Even on that pinfall attempt, pressure on the hamstring, knowing Doug would have to use all the force of his legs to kick out, but still the challenger was able to. Oh, Cruz, Cruz has got Williams on his shoulders. Williams is going to reverse. Williams, Williams has got him going for the Chaos Theory. Chaos Theory rolls through, but Cruz held on to the ropes. Ah, oh, both men. Going for their finishing moves there. Look at that huge suplex there by Doug Williams. Throwing Nathan Cruz around like he's a paperboy. And now, Dave, Chaos Fury, is he going to hit it? This time, rolls oh, in through. Oh, he's, he's got, got him. him. Gets oh, him. Gosh. Gets him. Oh, and Williams couldn't hold the bridge. He was going to go for the pin, but the knee gave way. Oh, wow. Williams, that's not... I mean, that's the move that he has beaten so many wrestling legends. And it was that hamstring given out of Doug Williams that may just have saved the title reign of the champion. I think Cruz was beaten there if Williams could have held on and got that bridge. Instead, Williams is having to try and get some feeling back into that knee and Cruz has time to recover. I think it's a risky thing to say that Nathan Cruz was beaten because if there's one thing we've learned about the show stealer, Dave, it's that this man doesn't know the meaning of the word quit when he's in that ring. Oh. Now we see it again, Cruz fighting back as Williams charged at him. Forearm to the face, Cruz goes down. But he's getting straight back up. It's the show stealer. And this one is really broken down now. These two warriors, these two gladiators of British professional wrestling from two different generations collide in the most eagerly anticipated title match of this entire program, Dave. And we are still going. Yeah, it's exhaustion setting in for both of these men. Now it's about who wants it more as they trade blows in the middle of the ring. It comes down to this, strike for strike between Williams and Cruz for the NGW Undisputed title. We're, oh, he's got him, so stolen, Dave. Oh, gets oh it. God, he hits it. He's got it, he's got it. Oh, but Cruz, Cruz doesn't have the energy to make the pin. Ah, oh, and the force, the power, the strength it takes to get a man like Williams up on your shoulders. And just like that Chaos Fury earlier, you've got to believe there's a very strong chance if Cruz could have made that cover, it would be all over now. But it isn't, and this one still continues. Both of these men have had the opportunity to put their opponent away. Neither man has been able to take that opportunity. And so this match rolls on between Williams and Cruz. Cruz will go for the show stolen a second time. This time Williams gets out of the way. Chaos Theory maybe. Chaos Theory again. Oh, he's got him. He's got him. He's... No, he doesn't. Cruz rolls through. Cruz. Oh, incredible reversal by the champion, David. Oh, look. He's going straight back for those legs. What's he doing? Submission hold by Cruz. Look at him bending the injured knee of Doug Williams! Oh, no, it's... Oh, my God, it's an inverted... Right on the hamstring, Dave, like an inverted scorpion deathlock of sorts, and Williams... Oh, Williams he taps. taps! Oh, Williams taps! Williams taps! And Nathan Cruz retains the Undisputed Championship! Of all the huge victories in Nathan Cruz's career, this may be the biggest of them all. Against Doug Williams, Nathan Cruz has stolen the show. Well, we were expecting an incredible demonstration of British professional wrestling that spanned multiple generations, and it was a match I was very much looking forward to. And I've got to tell you, Dave, this did not disappoint. What an epic showdown. And what a boost for Cruz to know that he has taken on the best British champion, arguably, of the previous generation and has beaten him. What a show of respect as well between Nathan Cruz and Doug Williams. Ah, oh, it's almost like a, a passing of the torch there from Williams to Cruz. What a showdown, what a match. And Dave, the huge matches do not end because on next week's show, we have a huge double grudge match. Liam Slater versus Screwface and El Ligero versus Joseph Connors right here on this program. Two rivalries that have been reaching a boiling point for months here in NGW. They will both come to a head next week on British Wrestling Weekly. What an episode that's going to be. 
but this week it's all about that man. He is our undisputed champion and he has just had one of the biggest victories of his life. And now it's official. Nathan Cruz will be the man that faces the winner of that Four Corners Gen X ladder match that's just around the corner. It will be the wild boar Mike Kitchman, Bubblegum, Robbie X, and the best friend of Nathan Cruz, the amazing Matt Myers. One of those four men will win that ladder match and win that contract to take on the most televised champion of the new generation, Nathan Cruz. My God. Whoever wins that ladder match is going to have a hell of a task on their hands because I don't know if Nathan Cruz, at this moment in his career, is beatable. If he can do to Doug Williams what he just did, it's gonna take an incredible, a superhuman effort to displace this champion. And the city of Hull, right here in Hull City Hall, is so proud of Nathan Cruz. He used to come and watch wrestling here as a child, as I said. And one of the wrestlers he idolized was the man he just beat on international television, Doug Williams. But the question in just seven days' time, Dave, can Liam Slater and El Aguero do the same in next week's huge double main event grudge matches? Take a look at this. What is that? Bells, something, something jangle. Oh. Who on earth is that? Oh! Just spat that! What, what, what is going on? This this mystery man is oh, he booted with Guerra in the face! That guy's huge! Look at the size of that guy! I mean, Joe Connors is about six foot four, and this guy must be about six, I don't know, six, 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 seven. And now Connors seems to be suggesting that this mystery assailant picks up this chain, what's he doing? Can you hear Liam Slater screaming? That stuff went straight in his eyes and this it, oh my God. Last time I was in an NGW ring, Screwface spread a green mist, whatever it was, into my eyes. I was sprayed in the eyes and I was physically blinded in my right eye for two weeks. And those were the longest two weeks of my life. Because I genuinely didn't know if I'd be able to see out my right eye ever again. So the one thing that plays on my mind over and over and over again is exactly why Joseph Collins has decided to, to pick me as someone as his target. Because I can't understand it, I can't see any logic behind it. When I started out, my wrestling career was ticking along nicely. I was getting onto shows, I was doing the best that I could, I was helping out where I could, and then all of a sudden, this dark cloud looms over me. This cloud of fear and depression suddenly engulfs my entire life. And I can't understand it, I can't get my head around it because there's nothing that I've done to him. There's nothing that I've done to any one of his cronies. It's just happened. Just like the rain cloud, comes over and ruins your day. Joseph Connors comes over my wrestling career and tips down on it. So I might not understand why he's doing it, but that's not gonna stop me fighting him. That's not gonna stop me fighting back from everything that he's doing to me. No more trying to find logic and reasoning behind a man that has no logic and reasoning. He's lit a fire in me that will be put out by any rain. So now it doesn't matter about what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, logic, reason, gone. The only thing that matters is ending this war. A double grudge match on next week's show. Liam Slater takes on Screwface and the righteous Joseph Connors goes one-on-one -on -one with the Mexican sensation El Ligero. Plus, we get ever closer to that four-way ladder match. A shot at the NGW title will be at stake as we approach Regeneration X.